Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing to create modular sprite chains as used in Battle Royale Tycoon. We're going to compose the head sprite from various beards and hairstyles. Let's begin. So here's what we've built so far. Here is the sprite sheet, which you can see that it is composed of the base sprite sheet, plus the body sprite sheet, and a head sprite sheet. Those are all mixed and matched together to create this final sprite sheet, which is used by the animation system. Now to get even more randomization, we're going to randomize the head with various beards and hairstyles. The game is out now on Steam, so check it out to see what I'm teaching here apply to a real game. So over here I have a sprite sheet with a bunch of beards, a bunch of hairstyles, and the base head. So let's go to the code. And here the first thing we need is serialized fields to grab the textures. And again, remember that on your textures, you need to go into the settings and enable read and write. We need this to be able to grab the pixel data from our code. So previously we were grabbing this head sprite sheet, which was already composed. Now we just want the base. So here is where we were grabbing all of our heads. So for now, instead of grabbing from the head texture, let's grab it from the base head texture. And the base head is only one, so we can remove the head index and simply grab it from 0, 0 with a height of 128, 128. Okay, so let's do a quick test and see if our sprite sheet is being created with the base head. And yep, there it is. It is now using the base head with no hair and no beard. Okay. So now let's do the same thing to grab the first hairstyle. So in here, grab the hair pixels. We're going to grab it from the hair texture. And for now, let's just grab the first one. So on 0, 0, 128 by 128. However, in here we don't want to do set pixels because if we do this, then we won't completely overwrite our head. So we need a function to overlay the hair pixels on top of the head pixels. So let's make a function to do that. A private void merge color arrays. We need a color array for our base array and another color array for the overlay that we wish to add on top of the base array. So the way we do this is cycle through our base array. And first we check if we actually have something on the overlay. So if the overlay on the same index dot alpha, if the alpha is bigger than zero, then we have something visible on the overlay. So in here, overlay has color. Then we check if the overlay of this index dot alpha, if it is one, then we want to completely replace the base array with whatever is on the overlay. So we set the base array on index i to be the overlay on index i. If it is not one, however, then it is somewhere between zero and one. So in here, we want to interpolate all of the colors. So first let's grab the alpha for the overlay. And now we're going to modify the base array pixel on index i. First, let's modify the red pixel and increase it by the difference between both of them and multiply it by the alpha value. So in here we are essentially interpolating between the base array value and the overlay value. So if the alpha is 0.5, then the final value won't be the halfway point between the base array and the overlay. So let's apply this to all the other colors. And finally we increase the base array alpha by the same as our overlay alpha. Okay, so that's our function for correctly overlaying a group of pixels on top of another one. So using this function, we can now go up here. First, we grab the head pixels, then the hair pixels. And now before we set all of these, we first take our merge color arrays. We grab the head pixels and we add the overlay of our hair pixels and the result will be placed on the head pixels. So we grab the head, grab the hair, merge the two and put the result into our texture. So let's run the code and see if we have our base head with our first hairstyle. And yep, there it is. There's the base head with the first hairstyle on top. So you can see in here we have the base head, which is that one, and the first hairstyle, which is that one. All right, so now let's do the same thing to add the beard. So in here, we're going to copy this in order to grab the beard pixels, grab it from the beard texture and do the same thing. Then we add the beard pixels on top of the head pixels, which again already contain the hair pixels and finally set it all on the texture. And yep, there it is, the final head composed of a base head, some hair and some beard. So now that we can do this, we can easily grab one at random. So let's see. 
So in general, let's first define an int for the hair index and do the same thing we are doing previously, do a simple random dot range between 0 and 4. And here the sprite sheet is placed on a 128 grid, so we do that multiplied by the hair index, and then do the same thing for the beard. And one more thing we can also do is make him bald or clean shaven. So we just define a bowl for has hair, and we define it, grab a number between 0 and 100, and say there's a 70% chance that he has hair. So if he has hair, then we do all of this, and do the same thing for defining if he has a beard. Okay, so we are selecting a random from our four possible hair and beard indexes and we are also giving it a 70% chance that he has hair or a beard. So let's see the final result. And yep, there's the hair, you can see some of them have no hair, some of them have no beard, and they're all very randomizable. So as you can see, just like this, we now have an almost infinite number of possibilities with just four hairstyles and four beard types. The game is out now on Steam, so check it out to see what I'm teaching here applied to a real game. So there you have it, we took our previous sprite sheet and went one step further by adding randomization to the beard and hairstyle. In the next video we're going to tint our sprite sheets to get multiple hair colors. As always you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.